Welcome to another edition of Contemporary Living with Farmer and Hill. I am one of your hosts, Andre Hill, and tonight I think I got a very good message that's going to feed your soul. But before we get started, I got a couple of housekeeping notes here for you guys. If you guys want to follow us, you can. if you're in the South Chicago area, if you're in the suburbs, you can follow our television show, Contemporary Living with Farmer and Hill, every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time on Channel 19 Comcast. You can also follow us on Facebook at Contemporary Living with Farm and Hill, where our Facebook page is, is continuing to grow. We have over 22,000 followers on our Facebook page. And also, if you want to become a guest on our show, if, or you, if you want to re reach out to us and have us talk on a particular topic, or you got any cuss and gripes with us, you can always email us at farmandhill at gmail.com. And last but not least, we are on YouTube. So you can follow us on YouTube at Farm and Hill, uh, Contemporary Living with Farm and Hill, I'm sorry, and hit the subscribe button as well. So tonight, I think I've got a very good message for you tonight, and I'm going to dive right into it. And tonight, I'm going to be talking about God is concerned about our health. All right, so that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. God is concerned about our health. And when I talk about health, I'm not necessarily talking about your physical health. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. But God is concerned about your inner man, your spiritual health. Of course, he's concerned about our life. When I say he's concerned about our life, of course, he's concerned about our family and our kids and our marriage and, and how we conduct ourselves on the job and how we carry ourselves as individuals of the body of Christ. For we know the Bible tells us as we get started in 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightfully dividing the word of truth. And tonight we're going to look into God's word that is truth. And tonight we're going to just go into it and we're going to dive into it. And I think, like I said tonight, it's going to be a very good message for each and every one of us. And I pray that it can bless each and every one of our souls. But understand tonight that God is concerned about our health. He's concerned about our mental health, our physical health, our spiritual man each and every day. So tonight I hope I'm able to help you get a grasp, a grasp of what's going on in the world. A lot of times we, we see things going on in the world and we get discouraged and, and we get heartbroken and, and things like that. And we forget about God. We forget about the creator because we so dependent on ourselves where we fail, we, are, we fail to be dependent on on him. And I want you to know tonight that you can't do it all. You can't do it all by yourself. And that's why we need a savior. We need somebody in our life. And that is Jesus that can help us through our trials and tribulations. So as we go, as I go into um, Psalms, um, I'm going into Psalms 119 verse 97 through 101. And we're going to look at the life of David. And when you begin to understand the life of David and you begin to understand his life, you will begin to understand why David was so blessed. You can, be, you can begin to understand why God loved David because David had an attribute that God loved. And it wasn't that David was perfect. It wasn't that David had all the answers. It wasn't that David was not a sinner or anything like that because we know the story of David. We know David went into the temple and ate the shoe bread, and back under the law, he should have been stoned. We understand that even David touched God's anointed. When God told David, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm, when David, when David showed Saul that, look, I can kill you, but God rebuked David because he was out of order. Also, if you look through David's life. You see, you know the story about David and Bathsheba and how he sent you right on the front line because he wanted to have his wife. So with all that being said, we understand that David had flaws just like each and every one of us. But that was something unique about David. One thing that was unique about David, but David always acknowledged his wrong. David always acknowledged his faults. He always acknowledged his failures. And a man like that is somebody that can be helped. So as we look into the Psalms 119, verse 97 through 101, it reads, Oh, how love I thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Thou through thy commandments has, has made me wiser than my enemies. For thy, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers. For thy testimonies are my meditation. 
I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word. So David tells you that in order for David to keep his mental health, in order for David to stay sane, he meditated on God all day. And we as believers, we have to become believers of God, yet, yet alone we ought to be meditating on God's word each and every night. Each and every day of our life, we ought to be seeking God in everything that we do. Whether we're starting a business, in our marriage, taking care of our kids, on the job, David tells you that he thought about the Lord each and every day. And said through his commandments, God made him wiser. So through God's word, we become wise. Through God's word, we begin to understand what he is doing in this, this particular age of grace. And how do we begin to know God? How do we begin to learn about the things of God? And the way we begin to learn about the things of God is that we have to study his word. We have to meditate like David did daily. And yet alone, we have to seek God on our knees through fasting and prayer. So this is one way, and this is a, a, the main way for you to keep your mind on God in, the, in these particular times that we're going through. So God is concerned about your health tonight. He's concerned about my health. He's concerned about my wife's health. He's concerned about your health, your parents' health, your kids' health. God is concerned about our walk with him. And we have got away from our walk with him. That's why every time a trial comes, that's why every time we go through something, we just want to give up and don't believe God. Because we have failed as individuals to keep our mind on God and to meditate on his word like David did each and every day. And then he talks in verse 98, I like how he talks about through thy commandments how you made me wiser. God's word makes you wiser. It gives you understanding. It gives you peace if you take your time and read the word of God. And then he said, I, he went on to say, I have more understanding than my teachers. There's no greater teacher out there than the word of God. Anything you're going through, any trials and tribulations that you're going through, the Bible answer it if we go in there and read it. All these things we're going through, we cry about marriage and we cry about relationships. We cry about all this stuff. But when we look at Christ on the cross, Paul compared his life and the things that he went through was light afflictions. When he seen how Christ died on the cross for each and every one of us. But we complain each and every day. We, 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 we hate our brothers. We, we hate our sisters. But we claim we love God. We, we want God to forgive us, but we don't want to forgive nobody. But I'm talking about God is concerned about your health. If you hate your brother, if you, if you can't forgive your brother, you got a health issue. You got, you got a problem that's deeper than a physical man. So God is concerned about our health, how we love our brother, how we, how we treat our sister, how we treat our husband, how we treat our wives. God is concerned about these things, how we raise our kids in today's world. But we look at today's world, we, we see kids are falling dead. We, we, we see kids are on drugs and, and, and they're strung out. Why? Because we have left our first love. And until we get back to our first love, we're going to continue to see violence. and We're going to continue to see death on our streets. We're going to continue to see mental and physical illnesses because we have left, lost and left. Our first love. God tonight is concerned about each and every one of our health. As I move on, he talking about I understand more than the ancients. And this is a heavy verse. David said, look, I understand more than the ancients. Those are the people that was before me. Those are the people that came a long way before me. But I, I understand more than them. Why? Because David. He focused on God each and every day. He, he meditated on him. And he understood who God was. See? And then he went on to say, I refrain my feet from every evil way. Every evil way. Because there was something greater than him. Because he understood God's word. He understood that God said, vengeance is mine. That, that I will repay those that have done you wrong. And I'm paraphrasing that. So David talks about how I refrained, how he refrained himself from evil. 
And whenever you begin to saturate yourself with the word of God and, 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 and meditate on God, your, your whole mindset begins to change. Your vision becomes clearer. You begin to see God in the land of the living with all the chaos and mayhem that's going on with cell phones and you got technology and you got people calling you all day and, and you you own the job and your boss is bugging you 24 24 because and you get depressed and you get upset because we have failed and forgot our first love and Paul talks about uh, David I'm sorry talks about how he just was in pretty much engulfed with God's wisdom and knowledge. And when you become engulfed with all that wisdom and knowledge that God has, your mindset change. Your health gets better. Your vision is better. Your business begin to grow. Your children begin to grow and live prosperous and, and, and go out there and become prosperous individuals that go out and bless others. But God tonight is concerned about our health. As I'm going on to 1 Timothy, Chapter 4, verse 8 through 10, it reads, For body, bodily exercise profit little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance. For therefore we both labor, labor and suffer reproach, because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. And he tells us, Paul tells us bodily exercise. You know, we, 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 we all on social media, we, yeah, we look good, we buff, and we got the bodies, and we got the hands, and, and the women got the hips, and everything like that. And when we glorify ourselves, and look at me, look, look. But the Bible tells you those exercises, they profit a little. But God is concerned about our inner man. But he goes on to say, but godliness. Godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of life that now is and that which is to come. When you're godly, not only do you live prosperous in this life, but you will live prosperous in the life to come. God tonight is concerned about our health. And then he talked about, for therefore, I like verse 10, we both labor and suffer and reproach. But, but check this next, this next verse out. Because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of, the, especially of those that believe. So Paul tells you, he rejoices in his affirmities. You get into Paul's writing. He rejoiced in persecution. He rejoiced in having food and not having food. He rejoiced when he had money and didn't have money. He rejoiced when he had clothes and didn't have clothes. He rejoiced when he was in jail and when he was out of jail because he understood that the sufferings that he went through could never compare to what Christ went through for each and every one of us on the cross. We have no excuses. We can't complain. But tonight, God is concerned about our health. How do we love our brothers? How, how do we say we love God, but we hate our brothers? How? How do we say we love God who we haven't seen, but we hate our brother who we see each and every day we wake up in the morning? On the weekends, on, on, on their birthdays, on, on holidays, we, we, we hate the very thing that God created. But we say, God, we love you. How? What type of love is that? So if you got something going on within you, it's because that we have forgot our first love. We have failed to pray. We have failed to see God. We have failed to read his word. We have failed to, uh, to fast and, and meditate on God. And then we want God to do something for us, for all the materialistic things. God, give me a husband. Get, Lord, give me a wife. God, give me, give me that Tesla that I always wanted. God, God, give me that big house. Lord, Lord, I just want a couple of million dollars. And God looks down at us and says, this is what you want, the material things. But you can't even thank me once a day. Here it is Solomon, one of the richest kings that ever lived. Only thing he asked God for was wisdom. And God gave him wisdom. And yet alone, he became one of the richest kings that ever lived. And he had prosperity on top of prosperity. God tonight is concerned about our health. He is concerned about our physical man as well as our natural man, but more so our spiritual man, because we know flesh and blood ain't going to enter into the kingdom. 
So tonight, I encourage you. Tonight, I challenge you. Tonight, I inspire you to read a scripture a day, to read God's word once a week, to get down on your knees and pray, even if it's for five seconds or 10 seconds. It don't take all day. It don't take 30 minutes. It don't take 30 minute prayer sessions to get through God. What type of God people think we serve? I got to go to church six hours. Why? What type of God do you think you serve? Good works don't save you. But we got to feel we got to do all these rituals and all this traditional, this traditional junk that's out there in order to reach God. How about a simple thank you every morning? How about I love you, Lord? Matter of fact, how about going out and help your brother that's in need? You want to be great in God? You want to be somebody in God? Take on the role of a servant. Jesus was a minister, and a minister is one that has come to serve. And he was the king of kings, and yet alone, the son of man had nowhere to sleep. The son of man had nothing to eat, nothing to feed, nothing to eat. The son of man was beaten for each and every one of us. And the only thing he asked for each and every one of us, just believe. Believe in what I did for you on the cross. Trust in what I did for you on the cross. He's not asking for much, but we are. We are each, each and every time we wake up. We want to be great. I want this great business, but how many of you acknowledge God in the morning to help you with your business? How many of you say, God, I need your help and your wisdom? Lord, how can my business be different than the next man business? Lord, how can my marriage be better than the next man marriage? Lord, what can I do for you as an ambassador of Christ out there today? Who can I go out there and bless? Lord, who can I go out there and give to? Lord, who can I go out there and just give them an encouraging word to let them know that you are a living God? God is concerned tonight about our health. He is concerned tonight about our spiritual man. And we must be, get back on track. We have become distracted with television. We have become, have become distracted with TV and movies and, and video games. We got to get back on track. John chapter 3 verse um, Third John, I'm sorry, chapter 2 reads, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. And there you go. God is concerned about our soul. Yeah, he said that God wants you to prosper and be in health. God, God wants us to be cancer free. Of course. God don't want us to have diabetes. God don't want us to have all this stuff that's out there that man is feeding us. With. And I, I like how my wife, uh, my, my, my wife friend Kenya had said, you know, this is a choice. A lot of this stuff we put in our body, we don't have to put in our body. Oh, they feeding us this, they giving us that, but we got a choice. We got a choice to take care of ourselves. And God wants us to prosper. He wants us to be in health. But one thing at the end of this passage, he said, even as thy soul prospers. When your soul is prospering, when your soul is growing, guess what? We become better people. We see differently. We talk a little bit different. We act a little bit different. And guess what? You ain't got to broadcast how great you are. Because when you're a child of God, people are going to know it right offhand. People are going to know because of the fruit that you bear. What type of fruit are we bearing tonight? What, 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 what type of... Where are we throwing our seeds? Are we, are we planted on good ground or are we planted on bad ground? And so these are the questions we have to ask ourselves tonight. God is concerned about our health. Where do our trust lie? Do we, do we trust in man or do we trust in God? Do we trust in what God can do for us? See, when you begin to understand God, when you begin to trust God, the trials and tribulations we go through, we won't even worry about because we know he, he's got us. And I understand this here. A lot of stuff that we go through, we put ourselves in those situations. God ain't punishing you. Oh, God punishing them. Oh, they, they got sin in their life. They, that's why they're going through what they're going through. Every man has sin in their life. The Bible said all have sin to come short of the glory of God. 
So we know that's not true. God is not punishing us in the age of grace. We are put our, we put ourselves in these predicaments and these relationships that don't last. We put ourselves in these, in these predicaments where we are about homeless because we won't work. The Bible says if any don't work, they don't eat. We put ourselves in this situation. Time after time after time, we continue to put ourselves in these bad relationships, these bad marriages. We put ourselves in, in, our, in, a, in a position where we run from job to job, and we blame everybody but ourselves. But one thing I like about God, his mercy and grace is renewed each and every day. Because each time we mess up, each time we fail, each time we fall, guess what? God's mercy is renewed each and every day, and God said, I'm going to give him another chance. I'm going to give them one more chance because I'm God and I'm faithful and I love them regardless. That's how just and faithful that God is. When we mess up, when we fail, when we fall, God still helps us. But as soon as our brother and sister mess up, we mad. Oh, I ain't talking to him for the rest of my life. That's it. Timothy shouldn't did that to me. Uh, Jessica, she shouldn't did that to me. We're ready to give up. But we want God to grant us mercy each and every day, in which he does. But the same love and grace and compassion he extends to us, we fail to extend to our very fellow brother and sister. God tonight is concerned about our health. And if you had that mindset, you had an attitude, you got a, there's something wrong with your heart. That, there's something wrong within you that has to be fixed. And the only way that it can be fixed is if you, if you get back to the word of God, if you begin to realize what God has done for you. And when you begin to realize what God has done for you and appreciate what he has done for you, we can begin to appreciate our fellow brothers and sisters when they fail, when they make mistakes, when they fall. They asked the question. They said, Lord, Lord, how many times shall we forgive our brother? And God said seven times, 70 times daily. A matter of fact, Paul comes back in, in the New Testament and tells us that guess what? When we mess up, we already forgiven under the age of grace. Ain't that something? We're already forgiven. Before we go out and do something wrong, we're already forgiven. But we got some issues tonight within us. We got some problems that has to be addressed. That we can get back on track. That, that, that we can see better. That, that we can see God. And the only way we can see God is through his word. And I ain't talking about seeing him physically as me and my wife is talking or something like that. I'm talking about when you begin to saturate yourself with the word of God. When you begin to understand God. Then you begin, when you begin to read his word. Then you begin to see God in the land of the living. He exists and he's alive and well. How do I know he's alive and well? Because when I go outside, I, I see the trees growing. I hear the birds chirping. I hear the crickets at night. I see you, my brothers and sisters. I see God in the land of the living. When I look around and you see these skyscrapers and you see the airplanes, you see these buildings, we see God at his best as he used and gift man with the gifts that are so great and extraordinary. When you look at the internet, when you look at all these wonderful things around here, you see God at his best. You see God in the land of the living. And that's the issue. God tonight is concerned about our health. As I get ready to close it out, I like King David. And if you ever want to get some wisdom, read the book of Psalms and read the book of Proverbs. You'll get some wisdom. And David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We ought to be glad when it's time to go into the house of the Lord. The saints ought to get out this, this, this phase and they're always going through something. Every time we look up, we, we, we're going through, uh, 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 Lord, I'm just going through. Yeah, we all going through. Who ain't going through? But that ain't the type of God we serve. Is there any joy today in the body of Christ? If, if, do, do we got somebody that's happy? David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. What about each and every one of us? Every time we go to church, we upset. We, we go on, we, we, we're mad. We go to church, we, we want God to give us something. Well, what you going to give God? 
What are we going to give God tonight? God is concerned tonight about our health. And we have to ask ourselves, what are we going to give God? So understand that tonight, that God is concerned about our health. Go out there, be a blessing to somebody. Understanding that our things we, the things we're going through are light afflictions. And they will never compare to what Christ went through. Understand tonight that we have to check ourselves and our inner being and our inner man. And if we're going to get back to loving our brothers and sisters and begin to understand what God is doing in this particular age of grace, we got to get back to serving God. We got to get back to the word of God. We got to get back to meditating on God. Because the only way we're going to fix what's going on inside of us is that we're going to study God's word. We got to seek help with him. I ain't talking about going out seeking help from counselors. I ain't going for saying going out and seeking help from this person, that person. It's time that we all become accountable individuals when it comes to the word of God, especially if you are a member of the body of Christ and understand who God, who God is for yourself. Now listen to what the pastor said. Now listen to T.D. Jakes, what he said. Now listen to what Joel Osteen said. Now listen to what Joyce Meyer said. It is about time for the body of Christ to start building a relationship with God for themselves. That is the age that we are in right now. You have to have that relationship with God, with God and, understanding, and understand what he's doing today in the age of grace. And if you're down and out and, and, and if you're, your soul is so jacked up, that is because you have failed to understand what God is doing for you today in the age of grace and, grace and what he has done for you already. He has forgiven each and every one of us. So should we forgive our brothers and our sisters? We should love our family and our friends and anybody that comes into our path because that is the true love of God. Understanding that we are ambassadors of Christ. And as ambassadors, we are representatives of Christ and what he has done for each and every one of us. So as always, as I get ready to close this message out, I thank God for his unmerited, undeserving favor called grace. For grace is the total absence of any works. You can't work for grace. You can't buy it. You can't sell it. You can't tear it for it. It is simply what God has given to each and every one of us. Because we believe that Christ died for our sins, that he was buried, and he rose again the third day for our justification. On behalf of myself, Melissa, and contemporary, my lovely wife, Melissa, I better say that because I want to be in trouble with her, and contemporary living, be blessed. Have a great night.